Okay, so here's the second video in our chapter seven sequence. Um, this one is going to be actually looking at how the normal distribution works. So we already talked a little bit about how the standard normal is the one where the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one. And we're going to do this because arithmetically that makes everything in that formula cancel. And if I go back to the slide from a little bit ago where the formula was kind of crazy, if we don't have sigma, if sigma is one, that cancels. If it's right here, that's going to be a two. If we get rid of mu being zero, then cancel, 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 and all the uh, nice things look nice again. So that's why we're going to do it. And in the old days, again, we used it because you had a table in the back of your book and you didn't want to have to have one for every single standard deviation and mean combination. So um, the way the table works is that it always gives them numbers that are less than. So if you think about it like that, it always gives you that one. Now you might say, gosh, that's the backwards from what I want. How am I going to get it to be um, greater than, and you just take one minus that because we know that um, we can do the complement like we did back in chapter five. Okay, so once you get the hang of it, it's actually pretty easy. And again, we're not going to use the table. We're going to use the spreadsheet to calculate that. Here's what the table looks like. Um, she actually stretched it a little bit, so it's a little hard to read. But the idea is if I said, hey, what's the probability that it's less than mean of zero? Well, mean in the zero is smack in the middle, so that's going to be 50%. And if we get to one standard deviation, it's going to be 84%. And at two standard deviations, it's going to be 97.7. Remember that two and a half percent that we talked about back with the empirical rule way, way back in chapter, whatever that was, chapter three. Okay, and of course, there's a negative side to it as well, because the numbers can be negative or positive. And you can see that right about three and a half is where the probability starts to be so low that it just becomes really, really unlikely that that thing happens. So, when we say that the normal distribution goes off to infinity, that's true, but infinity is like four, because by the time you get to three and a half in either direction, plus three and a half or minus three and a half, the values are so low that we can start to say, well, it's statistically impossible, even if in practice it isn't. Um, in quality control, we sometimes talk about six sigma quality, and the idea of six sigma quality is that you are six standard deviations away from the mean, the product would still work. And so if you do that, what that means is quality is so good, we don't have to worry about it even a little bit. And so six sigma was sort of this theoretical perfect quality that we would think about. But three and a half is actually pretty good because that would be uh, three per thousand. So if you were worried about throwing away three of your products per thousand on the assembly line floor, that's actually pretty good for most things. All right, so um, here we are, we're gonna do this. And again, I'm gonna do this actually in a spreadsheet um, instead of um, doing it here. And my first advice is that you should always draw a picture. So whenever you're doing it, draw a picture. This first question asks you, what's the probability that we have a z-score less than minus 1.67? And if you think about zero is always in the middle and minus one, minus 1. 1.67 is somewhere over here. And then you can do that. The command that we're going to use is called norms dist. And the S in the middle stands for the standard normal distribution. And what that tells you is the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one. We'll learn the other command here in just a little bit. And um, if we want to actually get the value to the left of a normal distribution, we use just norms dist of that probability. So we just put in here, um, of that value, I'm sorry, not the probability, norms dist of 1.67 and it calculates and it gives you 95. So that tells us 95% of the data is 1.67 standard deviations um, is below 1.67 standard deviations above the mean. So that gives us a really handy way to do that. If we wanted to go the other direction and I said, hey, what's the probability that the value is to the right? We just take one minus that. So if I said, what's the probability is greater than 1.67? Well, then I draw my little chart here again. Where's my drawing? We go like this, oops, that's this thick line. So if we say here it is 1.67 above the mean, scribble that in. That's the one we did up here. But now we want to do 1.67 and we want to go to the right of that. So that's the probability that it's greater than 1.67. And again, it's, I'm not very good at drawing it, but in practice, it's just one minus that same calculation we did before, 1.67. So there's not a second command to go greater than or less than or an option, you just do one minus that. And of course, that number is one minus that number, so you can see they add up to one. 
Okay, so that's pretty cool. And oops, I didn't clear off my drawings. The trickier one is we want to find what's the value between one number and another number. So if we said, what's the probability of being between 0.96 and 2.33? Let me go back here to my doodle page, right? And again, I'm going to draw it again. Let me first copy the between those two values. So we're going to draw it. So 2.33 is way over here and 0.393 is right here. Well, so what we want is the value in here. But what we're really going to calculate are two things. First, we're going to find the value of this larger number, which is going to include all this extra. And then we're going to subtract off that extra. And my bad drawing notwithstanding, we're just going to calculate this two different times. So notationally, we would say that's going to be the distance of the two, the difference of the two. So we would just say norms dist b minus norms dist a. And that would give us the value again between some value of a and some value of b. Okay, so we break the problem up into two pieces. So another way to think about that is we're going to do it just like here, like I did with the picture. That first value, the probability that z is between those two values is going to be equal to the probability that z is less than the bigger number minus the probability that z is less than the smaller number. So we can go ahead and calculate that. And again, I did these before like a cooking show. So this one is norms dist 2.33. And then for the second one, we just calculate that it's 0.82. And then we just subtract because subtraction is awesome. And you can either do that as a simple subtraction, or you can put the double formula in as we uh, do that. So um, however we are going to make it work, this idea that we're just going to calculate the numbers. By the way, if we were using the table, we would just take 2.33 and we would look it up on the table. And I'm going to hold this up really close to you so that you can see that 2.33 is in fact 0 0.9901 on the table. And we just subtract it that way. If you ever have to use the table because you're uh, trying to do it the old fashioned way, that's okay. And it's actually pretty easy to use. Okay, so let me clear off my drawings here. We can see her better drawing. So the proportion is uh, less than 1.67. We just look it up on the table and then we draw it again. And again, my advice is to always, always, always draw it. Okay, we could also go backwards and say, what's the probability that, uh, what z-score would we need to get 20%? And if we go ahead and do that, we go ahead and do that. So that's the same as finding the 20th percentile. And we can use the commands for that is norms in. And then we just put in our value 0.2. And if we do that, the number is less than zero, or it's negative because we know zero is right at the mean, that's the 50th percentile. And we can figure it out and it turns out it's about 85%. Now we could be even snazzier and we could put the value over here for the 20th percentile and then just go ahead and put this into the command like that. Instead of doing it, we just put this uh, value here and we get that same number, but now we can just go ahead and play with it. So if I say, what's the median? You'd say that's at zero. The 80th percentile is going to be the plus version of that, 95%, uh, whatever, 1.645. Um, and so with this norms inf command, we can uh, do the same thing, but in the backwards direction. And so that's kind of snazzy to be able to do. <clears throat> so again, here she has some questions to walk through.
So what's the, prob what's the z-score that corresponds to the 50th percentile, the 30th percentile, and so on? 20% above it will have a 1 minus that. The middle 60th is going to be a little bit harder, but not really that hard. But right, we can go ahead and figure that all out um, with those calculations. Now, of course, real things don't have a mean and standard deviation that's equal to 0 and 1. So we need a little bit fancier command to do uh, the more general normal. And we're just going to use the fact that this calculation lets us convert any factor. So if we subtract the mean from a distribution, that's just going to slide it back and forth, right? You remember this is again from pre-calc that if you subtract a number from a function, it just scooches it up and down the number line. The standard deviation is on the bottom of the fraction. And you remember if you multiply or divide um, a function, that's going to stretch or spread it out. So the mean scooches it up and down the number line. The standard deviation squishes it if it's small or stretches it if it's big. And again, calculation-wise, that can be kind of a pain. We can do the same thing backwards just by working with the formula backwards and reverse standardizing. You can think of it that way. So if someone has a blood pressure on average of mean of 20, 120, and a standard deviation of 10, we could do that same calculation that we did before. So what proportion of people have blood pressure readings less than 135 millimeters um, in the measurement? So we can actually do this one by eye. We can say, well, gosh, 135 is 15 bigger than 120. And if we divide it by 10, that's 1.5. So that's 1.5 standard deviations above the mean. So we've standardized that value. So calculation wise, we can get it to that same formula and work through it that way. And again, she has the nice pictures here. Remember the slides are in the um, blackboard so you can get these and go through these a lot slower if you'd like or zoom in and see uh, the little numbers that she has there. On our Doodle page though, um, let me just make a new um, little tab here. So if we say um, the mean is equal to 120 and the standard deviation is equal to 10, then if I say, well, what's the probability that x is less than 135, we can now use either, we could do algebra and just say, well, 135 minus 120, let's put that in parentheses, 135 minus 120 divided by 10 gives us a value of 1.5, and then we could use that norms dist command we used before, or we can use the norm dist command. Um, and it takes a value and then it asks you to put in the mean and the standard deviation. So you just enter it in. So here I'm going to do that now. Norm dist. And then you put in the mean and the standard deviation. So in our case, it's 120. And then 10. And then you always put this little one in here. And so we can find that value. 135 is the value we're interested in. 120 and 10. And boom, 93% of people have um, a blood pressure below 135. Okay, so again, norm dist is the command. It uh, takes a little bit of getting used to, um, but it's actually pretty straightforward to use. Um, sometimes it wants you to put in a cumulative thing, and if you do that, just make that a one. That's a little um, thing that we have there. Okay. And that's called norm dist. And there's also norm dot dist, which does the same thing. That's a little bit different uh, version. It's one of those things they do to be consistent with other things. So either norm dist or norm dot dist. And again, you put in x mean standard deviation, and it calculates it for you. Again, if you want it to be greater than, You don't do any kind of fancy calculation, you just do one minus norm dist. So put an x mean and the standard deviation, right? This is another place we're putting the numbers at the top with the dollar signs. You can uh, kind of cheat and just enter in those numbers once and then uh, get it from there. But you can go on through and calculate it from there. All right, notationally, we use this notation of z alpha to do the to the right of. So instead of being the to the left of, like we've done by the default, we say z alpha is 1.28. And for right now, that's just a little vocabulary word you're learning. 
But later on, we're going to use that to calculate some of the fancier uh, things that we do. So, okay, um, 7.3 is coming up next, and that's going to be a pretty short video that I will uh, start here in just a second.